मेरा नाम किशोर है मैं मणिपुर से आया हूँ नॉर्थ और सिर्फ इंडिया से जैसे आप लोगों ने बताया कि अभी कश्मीर में आप लोगों को जिहाद के नाम पे टेररिस्ट बता रहे जा रहे हैं वैसे मणिपुर में मणिपुरी जो रहते हैं वहाँ पे जितने उदगरवादी करते हैं हम लोग उस हिसाब से वहाँ पे हम लोग उनको टेररिस्ट बोलते हैं उनकी वजह से आज मैं पंद्रह दिन से यहाँ पर हूँ और मुझे वहाँ पर बताया गया कि मैं यहाँ पर मरा हुआ हूँ मेरे घर वालों को ये मालूम है कि मैं मर चुका हूँ और उनसे डर के मारे मैं यहाँ पर बॉम्बे में आया हूँ और मणिपुर में आज तक आप लोग का ये पीस चैनल नहीं देखा और मैं बहुत अच्छा रिलीजन केचर हूँ मेरी नॉलेज बहुत अच्छी है मैं गुरुद्वारा गया हुआ हूँ चर्च गया हूँ बाइबल पढ़ी हुई है सब जगह गया हूँ लेकिन आज तक मुझे ये नहीं मालूम चला कि मुसलमान ही लोग जो दाढ़ी रखते हैं और इस्लाम में क्या लिखा हुआ वो हिंदी में आज तक नहीं मिली ना इंग्लिस में मिली मुझे मणिपुर में और मैं ये चाहता हूँ कि अगर मणिपुर में या फिर कहीं पर भी नॉर्थ ईस्ट जोन में अगर आप लोग ये भेजें तो बहुत अच्छा रहेगा और मुझे एक इंग्लिश या फिर हिंदी में अगर यहाँ पे मिले तो मैं लिए खरीदने के लिए तैयार हूँ ब्रदर आज अ क्वेश्चन दैट लाइक पीपल आर फाइटिंग इन कश्मीर एंड दैट डूइंग जिहाद सिमिलर इन मणिपुर द पीपल आर फाइटिंग एंड ही हैड टू लीव द सिटी एंड कम हियर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द टेररिस्ट ही फिफ्टीन डेज हियर ही इज हैप्पी टू लर्न अबाउट इस्लाम ही वॉन्ट्स टू नो दैट वाई इज इन पीस चैनल इन मणिपुर एंड ही वॉन्ट्स टू नो दैट वाई डू मुस्लिम की पबियर दिस टू बेसिक क्वेश्चन Brother in Kashmir, as I mentioned, I can't say everyone is doing jihad. They are struggling. They are striving. Wait, 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 sir. You are thinking me as a wrong. I say you. You are at the right. I perfectly understood the question, brother. Okay. I never said that you are wrong, and your question is also very good, brother. But I'm trying to clarify that everyone fighting in Kashmir, they may not be doing the true jihad. Some people, for the ulterior motive, may be doing wrong thing. those who are truly following the commandment of the quran and fighting then you can say that they are doing jihad fi sabilillah i cannot put a blanket rule that everyone in kashmir is doing jihad jihad fi sabilillah now coming to your question of manipur i know that there is a lot of fighting going in manipur and because of them you are here maybe it is allah's planning almighty god has planned that because of fighting you are here leave us at peace in this world maybe you'll get peace in the year after also correct now you have heard such a good lecture about peace this world peace is a temporary peace we should strive but the best peace is the peace in the year after now coming to your question why do muslims keep a beard and why peace channel is not seen in manipur as far as the peace channel not seen in manipur you can easily take the frequency if you put a dish maybe the cable operator may not be putting it but if you put a dish which costs just a few thousand rupees and face it in the direction of 68 degrees east towards intel sat 10 inshallah you'll get the peace channel you can try and tell the cable operator to see it we cannot go to manipur and try and force them but if they put the dish and face it to 68 degrees east and tune into the frequency inshallah i'll get it coming to your question why do muslims keep a beard what i say that if the label shows your intent to wear it i'd give them the talk that if the label shows your intent to wear it for example if you go to a conference of intellectuals the people wear a label i am a doctor i am an engineer i am a scientist it gives an informal introduction when you go to a gathering a conference only of doctors then the specialty is mentioned say dr so and so he is a cardiologist neurologist nephrologist If you have a heart problem, you go to cardiologist. If you want to know about kidney, then you go to nephrologist. If you have brain problem, neurologist. Informal introduction. The Quran says in Surah An-Nam, chapter number six, verse number fifty-four. The Quran says that Iza jaqal lazina yu minuna bi ayatina fakul salamu alaykum. That when you meet those who believe in our signs, you say salam alaykum. You wish them salam alaykum. Islam. Pay stress on saying "Assalamu alaikum." It's the religion of peace. Now, minimum in a day, every Muslim at least has to pray five times a day. Now, when he prays five times a day, even if he prays only the first salah, the compulsory salah, five times into two, when we end the salah, we say "Assalamu alaikum, Muhammadullah." Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May peace and mercy and the blessing of Allah be on all the people on my right. May the peace and mercy and blessing of Almighty God be all the people on my left. 
Every salah I say twice. I have to read minimum five salah. Minimum ten times I'm wishing salam to all the people on my right. The peace beyond people on the left. If I read the sunnah te moqada, that is another ten times. So minimum twenty times I wish salam to the people on my right and people on my left. If I read the normal sunnah, it may be more. Anytime I meet a Muslim, I have to wish him assalamu alaikum. May peace be on you. It's also mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 86. It says, when anyone gives you a greeting, gives you a courteous greeting, wish back more courteously or at least the same. So anyone wishes me assalamu alaikum, I have to say wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. If anyone says peace be on you, I have to say may peace and mercy be on you. If someone says assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, I have to say wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. I have to wish back better. If someone says assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, I have to wish back at least the same. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. If someone tells me assalamu alaikum, and if I say wa alaikum assalam, words are the same, but it's coming from the bottom of the heart. Even that is better. So Allah says in the Quran, wish back more courteously. Now, when I'm traveling, and when I meet Muslims, how will I know that he's a Muslim? So, we have identity, beard. But today, in the media, if you are a beard, you're a terrorist. Yeah. Now, but uh, look brother, at this. Brother, let me complete the answer. You. Please let me complete the answer. If the Sikhs keep a beard and wear a turban, they are called as staunch followers. If Muslims keep a beard, they are called a terrorist. If the Christian nuns, they cover their head, they are called as religious. If Muslim women are covered, they are called as subjugated. Media, media, media. See, this beard, this beard can't even harm a fly. And this cap of mine, it can't even harm a fly. If you read the Quran, the Quran does not say you should keep a beard. There's only one verse in the Quran in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 94, where Moses, peace be upon him, he catches the beard of Harun al salam Aaron, peace be upon him. And he says that, O son of my mother, why do you catch me by my beard? That is the only place where the beard has come. But our beloved Prophet says in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, hadith number 780 and 781, our beloved Prophet said, do the opposite of what the pagans do. Trim your mustache short and grow the beard. Now, because it's a commandment of the Prophet, Allah says in the Quran, Atiullah wa Atiur Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Our Prophet has commanded and we obey. And it is a good way for me to identify. Many people, when I go to anywhere on the streets, I go to a foreign country, they see a cap and a beard, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. It's an informal introduction. I'm spreading peace. So what we realize that it is an informal introduction. And like, for example, if you go in a car, if you're the doctor, he puts a cross. Why? To identify that that car belongs to a doctor. If you have some emergency, you can stop the car and you can ask for help. Now, when you see a person having a beard, as well as covering the head, you know he's a Muslim. I remember, and if you ask your grandparents, you ask your grandparents 50 years back, 100 years back, they will tell you that the non-Muslims, when they wanted to hire a taxi, a cab, they looked for a driver who wore a cap and who had a beard. Muslim driver, he won't take me for a ride. When they wanted to buy from a grocery, they wanted to buy from a person whose owner had a beard, Muslim. He will not cheat. But today, if you wear a cap or a beard, it means you're a terrorist. So, if the name is maligned, we have to reinstate that glory to this beard. Fine? And it is only a label. It's the commandment of the Prophet. He said it, therefore we do it. It cannot even harm a fly, but it gives an informal introduction that we are Muslim. We can wish each other. And if you have any problem, if you require help, it's the duty of Muslim to help the neighbor. You stop a man with a beard and a cap, inshallah he'll help you. Hope that answers the question. Thank you.